Hello everybody. Welcome to Minecraft Maker. Uh, I'm on the Minecraft LAN party server and it's raining. I'm just going to show you something, but it's raining. Um, so, oh, what I got, man, beasties about. Uh, okay, uh, let me do something about this. Yeah, I'll be back. Oh, it's been raining all day, and uh, mobs are spawning, and it's not particularly great for video. It looks gray, and it's noisy, so it's almost, it's almost sunset, though, so we can sleep in a bit. I have here everything I need to make a layer of the iron farm, and that's what we're going to do. As soon as I can sleep, get it to be light out and make the rain go away. Uh, but just while we're waiting, so I, I did a little spreadsheet where I worked out all the resources needed. Um, there's, these are the blocks that are needed. And uh, basically I worked out a number of slots in my inventory, rounded up the number of stacks. Because uh, you can't share an inventory slot with multiple items. And uh, yeah, so this is this this number here is actually higher if you want to take into account the pillars leading up to, and that's actually a good point. I need I need a little bit more stone brick. But that's okay. We got plenty. Okay, so is it nighttime yet? No, not yet. It's close though close uh, sorry you have to sit out there in the rain beauty I need to go exploring around here I need to I haven't gone any farther north than this really and uh, there might be some interesting stuff up there oh I can sleep and the rain clears up oh thank goodness okay Let's check for beasties so much better. Yay. Nothing hiding under the uh, the cliff there. So we're going to start with this one here, I think. And can I still touch that? No, I need a nice shovel. Okay, that's fine. So I want the first layer of this thing to be, I want to be able to walk under it with plenty of headroom. So I want like three, at least three, right? I want three or do I want to go four? Let's go four. Okay, good. So now this is, this is the design that I am using. And uh, yeah, and as you know, as I said, it is basically based on Doc M 77s tutorial. Whoops, don't do that. And, uh, that's right. Sorry, I don't normally play with this. I have a, uh, I have a trackpad that I am playing with that I only use pretty much when I'm recording. Uh, normally use the trackpad on my laptop. And the, the, the laptop trackpad, I can leave my fingers on the trackpad and... You, know, you click with two fingers and that gives you a um, a right click right or an option click or whatever um, and if I do that oops ah okay if I do that on this trackpad I um, if I if I drag the fingers too much and I don't lift them off between clicks, it tries to register right clicks as left clicks, which isn't good because that will try to destroy blocks that I've placed and all that good stuff. All right, so this. so I put these around here to give some light underneath. Um, I will probably have to put additional light as well. And also to make these uh, stand out when you're looking at them from a distance. 
because I think that's uh, kind of important. So this is the outer ring, and then I just need to lay in a bunch of stone. Hang on a second, let me do this, and I'll be right back. All right, and as the sun is starting to set, or whatever, um, I'm finished with the first layer. So we've got chiseled stone bricks in the corners, got sea lanterns along the edges, and then I've got a big thing of stone. And that's uh, this is where the spawning platform is going to be. There's a this is where the golems will spawn in the middle. Uh, the middle four blocks, a two by two hole, I will cut out, but we will do that um, in a bit. Uh, so we've got sacrificial blocks in there for the time being it just makes everything easier I don't have to count out where they go um, when I place the water it will tell me where they go so here now we go along and we start to build up our sides so let me do this and this is just stone that I'm using for now so hang on a second okay and then we're gonna put another course up here before I proceed pretty much build this from the bottom up but there's a couple spots where it's useful to go ahead a little bit we're gonna work through the night I think that'll be fine I won't get any spawns in here I don't have any torches on me but that should be fine so now I need our polished andesite I won't need the chiseled for a bit yet so so I'm gonna do a course of polished andesite this just gives a little bit of contrast with the stone uh, it gives a little bit of detail. I like I like these blocks a lot. Um, they're nice and smooth looking, uh, but they have the the sort of chamfered edge. I think it looks real nice, especially when laid out like in a row like this. The stone, because we're so used to seeing just piles of stone like this around um, underground and when mining, um, tends to look a little un. Doesn't look man-made put it that way so here we go oops another stack of the polished hand side here and I need a few for the villager pods okay and notice it's dark in the middle here but that's fine so now we pull out our ice and I'm gonna use ice <coughs> to lay this out um, just because it's it's easier you could carry two buckets and do this um, and notice I'm not putting any within the two corners uh, within two blocks of the corners here or the the corner block of the block next to it. oops that's fine um, which means I have to double up one of them because you need every space along the edge here needs to be adjacent either needs to be uh, what will become a source block or it needs to be a neck between two source blocks So you have to double up one of them. It's no big deal. Ice is cheap um, Especially if you have an ice farm and a silk touch back. Okay. Now we break all these pop pop having uh, Depth strider boots is very handy for this kind of stuff Okay and now you'll notice that in the corners, the water kind of comes up here and then flows into the corner. That's what we want. And flowing into the corner is not a good thing, but what is is uh, we don't have source blocks forming in the corners. If we had source blocks along two edges, two uh, adjacent edges, uh, the whole thing would turn into water into source blocks and we'd have a lake instead of a flowing thing uh, and that's bad because the whole point of you putting the water here is to flow the golems in towards the center which is becoming defined as I break these so it's all good and we will deal with the corners in a sec <coughs> Sorry. Okay. So now here's my two by two blocks in the center. I'm going to leave those alone for just a second and I'm going to get my water bucket because you can't do this next step with ice. So I'm going to place in the corner, but one up, I'm going to place for my water bucket. I'm going to fill up from one of the source blocks along the side. 
So now this means that no matter where you are on the corner, on the sides, you get pushed in towards the center. Eventually you end up in the center there. And you can't place ice up here because uh, if you place the ice and break it, it'll just disappear. Uh, ice, in order to turn into a water source block, needs to be sitting on a solid block. So you can't do it. Uh, you could, if you wanted to, place a, a solid block here. In fact, a lot of the tutorials will tell you to put a 2x2 two two blocks here and then break them and then place the water above. Okay, so now we can get out of this by swimming up. Yay! Well, hi, Mr. Creeper. Okay, and now I'm going to break out three of these. Okay, and again, having uh, depth strider is a handy thing. Uh, so you can deal with the water cart. Okay, I'm leaving this one in so that if for some reason I actually spawn an iron golem in here once I'm loading up the, the villagers, but if I before I get my collection system in, this will prevent the golems from falling down to the ground, which is kind of important. Um, and it's easy, it'll be easy enough to break from down below. Okay, so there we go. First couple layers, first three layers done. So let's proceed. So uh, the next layer is uh, somewhat boring. It's just another course of stone, stone bricks in the corner. Hang on a sec. Okay, so next layer done. We never need to go back down inside there. Um, the sort of stopper block here, I'm only going to put on the bottom layer, on the bottom uh, spawning cell. The upper ones I'll do uh, because they line up. Any golems that fall down from there and land here will get blocked here. So we only need to do it for the bottom one. So if I fell down in there, we could put ladders, a ladder on the side on the one of the polished bricks uh, polished blocks and climb out or ender pearl out so so after that we need now we're on layer mm -hmm. so now we need to start building the villager pods I need to put it in the floor so so what I'm gonna do is basically put in a four by four we're going to do this on each side <coughs> sorry oh okay so just stone on the bottom you need to make sure that it lines up the center to line up with the hole there uh, and there should be so then i'm going to put Sea lanterns along the edges. So four there, four here, four here, and four here. And then going with the motif, we will be using uh, chiseled bricks. So going with the vertical motif, we'll be putting chiseled bricks down here. Yeah. And then there should be one, two, three, four, five, six spaces there now um, notice I have some dirt here this is the crate scaffolding we uh, we want to put this in to help us place the next layer place the doors for the next layer but it's easier to put this in now than to try to do it later and uh, <coughs> We may as well build the next layer here as well so we're going to put stone bricks on the side we are going to put um, some of the polished andesite along the side here one two three four one two three four two three four and then we're going to put some stone some regular old stone along the edge here. We're going between the between the doors. So this is where the village is going to hang out. And ooh, I made a mistake here. Yay! Okay. So here we need to we need to put some water in here too. 
So we're going to place them along the in the corners here and just in the corners. So it pushes the villagers into the center. And it'll kind of keep them bouncing around in the center here. All right. So then we need our doors. I don't need the glass yet. So we need to put doors along here like this. We are going to put the stone brick in the corners. Let me go get the other side. And this becomes a little bit of a logistics challenge. But it's not that bad. Okay, so that's this side. And we need to do that all around. So let me take care of that and I'll be back. Okay. Uh, just in case it's not obvious, the scaffolding is here because, and you don't need all of it, but it's just easier. Uh, because the doors will go in, so you could place a door a couple blocks away facing you, but if you go farther than that, it'll end up facing a different direction. And we want them all to be on this outer edge of this block. So that's uh, the scaffolding makes it so you can be facing the right direction when placing the doors. Uh oh. Ah. Um, so that's that's what they're there for. So now I've got all the villager pods started off. I've got all the doors placed and this round done. Uh, we're now going to take out the scaffolding. Uh, so this is, I don't expect to get these back, so I'm just using dirt, uh, but you could use whatever. I mean, you could go down and pick them up if you wanted to, but I don't see the point. Um, and don't forget, although it seems like you're out on a ledge here, you have a door. You can walk through the door, so you can always, uh, to pick up the last one, you can always do that. And then close the door and then you can walk along this edge and pop up like that so you could uh, step out and take out the scaffolding this way so let me take care of this and then we'll start on the next layer and while you're taking out the scaffolding you may as well place in these blocks so the, the corners here uh, more of these uh, corner blocks um, I should have done it earlier, so I apologize. Um, we'll figure we'll figure out the right approach for this here in a sec. Okay, now we're going to start on the next round of these. So I'm going to go back to the chiseled and let's see here. I don't need this. Yeah, we'll need that. Okay, uh, so we're gonna put in uh, chisel brick, and then we're gonna put in some sea lanterns. Bop. And chisel brick in the corner. And then along here, don't need this for now. We're gonna put more, we're gonna finish these off. This row of stone might not actually be necessary, but we're gonna use it anyway. All right, so, uh, and then this, after this, we may as well start off, may we? Yeah, no, we'll, we'll go do the others like this first. Um, this is almost done. We are going to, uh, there will be a layer of glass on top of this to keep the villagers in and safe. Uh, but we don't want to place all that glass right away. So we're going to place a couple of blocks uh, you know, like six uh, glass blocks here when we get up to the next layer. 
All right, um, let me finish up the rest of these and we'll move on to the next bit. Okay, uh, let me finish up this one real quick. So these sea lanterns obviously give light to the villagers, so no zombies can spawn in here, although they're in water. I don't think they can spawn anyway. Um, and they also, you know, outline it and, and give it a, a little bit of a look around the outside. There we go. Okay, now, next. Next part starts to get a little tricky. Now we need to put in another spawning floor. And we want it to be lined up with the top of this, these doors here. So if you shift and click on the doors, it'll place one out in front of the door since they're on the other edge of the, of the thing. Um, you can also put in the, these uh, need to be here as well. Oops. So you could also lay in those and then build it around. It's an 18 by 18 floor, the same dimensions as the one below. So let me go take care of that. This will take a little while. And I'll be back. All right, so we have the top, uh, top layer in, the top spawning floor in, the iron golem spawning floor. So now we're going to finish off this... Uh, we can finish off the next two layers in one go. So we put in this and we're topping off each spawning cell with the chiseled bricks just to keep our little uh, motif going. So do that and do that. Hello creeper, you can't get at me up here. And that and that. Last of the chisel bricks and now we put in a layer of stone around the edge here. <coughs> and uh, yeah, hang on a second. Let me take care of this and we'll do finishing touches. Oh, and we're gonna do stone and then we're gonna do a, uh, on the top we're gonna do a layer of the sea lanterns like this. So it'll look like this. And you can probably guess how the rest goes because we need to put in water. So anyway, let me uh, take care of this and I'll be back because there's a couple small, small details that need to be finished up. Okay, so we're finishing up the sea lanterns here. And the reason we're putting these up here is so that on the top ridge here, if I just did stone or something else, um, stuff could spawn up there. And then we're going to go and do the same thing as we did before. Notice I've still got the four blocks in the center still there. Because I need to go and place in my water. Doo, 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 doo. So the water should keep uh, non-iron golem mobs from, spa whoops. <laughs> uh, from spawning in on this level. But um, I have plenty of ice. Uh, but I do want to keep them from spawning up on the top up there. Um, now iron golems from this, this, from this level, it's not a big deal. Like if I fell from here to the ground, of course I'd be fine. Even without the feather falling boots. Um, iron golems take no fall damage. So they can fall from any height. Oh, that's right. Um, that's right. These things are going to start melting. Oh, fascinating. Uh, these things are going to start melting because they're right below the sea lanterns. Not a big deal, but they, they do exhibit an interesting behavior. They melt, but then they don't update. They just become a thing of water. Like this. Water source block that doesn't flow. So, um, if you have a couple of those next to each other that aren't working... Um, that aren't flowing the way you want, you can just place water from your bucket next to it and it'll update it and it'll be fine. But they will, all you have to do is, is, is as you saw, pretty much break one and it all kind of goes away. Okay, next step. Don't need the ice anymore. Get my bucket and we're gonna place the ones in the corner. Boop, refill. Boop. 
refill. Boop. Refill. And boop. And refill. Okay. So now we're going to take out the blocks here. And if you hold shift here, the water won't push you off the edge. Just a little tip. Okay, so from here you can swim out the corner. Up onto the side. Woohoo! Now, finishing touches. We, as I said, we're going to use green glass to block the villagers, sort of trap the villagers in here. Uh, we don't want to put all of it in right away though. So we're going to put in a little bit like this. Um, oh, that was kind of dumb. Okay. Okay. And this is why we have ladders. <laughs> um, so when you, when you're putting the villagers in here, you're going to, you're going to get down here. You're going to need to get out. So I put a ladder right there. It lets me get up onto the glass here and then hop up onto the top. So what this does is I'll load the villagers from the side here, right? So the village is going to be over there beyond that thing. And we're going to have rail track that comes along in here and pushes them up here in mine carts. And then you're going to push them into the water and, and break the mine cart. Um, and you need corner spots. Uh, so you need the sides here open so you can push the villages in. And then you need the corner spots open so that you can feed them if you need to make them willing to breed so we'll uh we'll just go ahead and put in the ladders now because it'll make it easier uh you could place this glass without placing the ladders but you're going to need that ladder um at a future point anyway so i may as well just put it in now woohoo Yeah, there we go. All right, so we're almost done with the first layer here. Or the first uh, spine cell. And just in time for sunset. Kind of curious what these look like at night. Uh-oh. Flowing water. Bane of building. All right, so pop up there. <coughs> Excuse me. Now we get our ender pearl, and there we go. First one in. Uh, so I have this here. I am going to put ladders running up the side because we need to be able to get back up. Hello, Mr. Spider. Uh, so this will be our access to continue the build because from here, basically we're going to put 62 stone bricks up here and then we're going to do this all over again and it'd be nice to be able to get down safely go kill the spider oh where'd the spider go oh pick up our miscellaneous bricks blocks that haven't uh, despawned yet that's a cow it's dark over here i should put some torches okay so that's pretty much it so from here We've got holes. This will block any any golems that do decide to spawn once we start putting in the villagers. All right, it's dark out here. It's a little dangerous, so. Um, but of course, that's not going to stop me. Pop, pop, pop. So this thing actually has a some supports. So it looks like a real thing, not just this crazy floating blob <laughs> yeah it's dangerous out here right now Whoa, 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 no, 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 no. Oh. Okay. You didn't actually damage anything. So, hence the value of building with stone. 
Okay, it's dark. Let me go sleep, get rid of these guys, and then I'll clean that up. We got the pillars in, so we're good. All right, hang on a sec. Stupid creepers. I see you floating in the water there. Yes, I do. I see you too, Mr. Skeleton. And spider. Oh, I mean, murder your face. Oh. Okay, well, I didn't really need that snow block. So that's all fine and dandy. Oh, goodness gracious. And eventually I may build up a layer here. He's going to try to get me. Uh, having having the floor here. Just a tree. I'm all paranoid now. Uh, having just the floor here made out of dirt may not be the best idea in the world. So I may, for the plaza underneath all this, I may replace it with, uh, I don't know, pattern, pattern made out of... Uh, stone bricks something like that i don't know uh the snow here was just really a spacer as long as they don't get too damaged as long as those don't get damaged i know where this one goes now i can take these out i don't really need them and i can light up this area here so all this is really i think kind of temporary the flooring at least so we can uh, work on this without um, worrying about the final design we'll get there and temporary cactus farm nowhere near as productive as that so what happens if I do this oh you can oh okay okay Whoa, there's tulips here. I didn't know the tulips grew in plants biomes. All right, so I've been recording for about an hour now. You won't see all of it, of course, because most of it's boring. But uh, so that's our spawning. That's our first spawning cell in the Iron Golem farm. There will be two more up there, and then there will be a stack of three over there. One over there, one over there. Twelve spawning cells all together. The hardest part, I mean, it's not going to be the building. It's kind of boring looking, but um, but they work. It's a functional thing. Uh, the hardest part is going to be getting the villagers in. So we have to start working on that next. Um, and I will probably show some of that to you next time. All right. Thanks for watching. This has been Theron. This is Minecraft Land Party, and I will see you next time. Bye.